Okay, I'd like to introduce uh, uh, myself. I'm Tremont Miao. I'm associated with analog devices and have been involved in this twig thing for the last 25 years, I think it feels like. Um, in any case, uh, I want to introduce Dr. Yoshiro Arakawa, who um, has his PhD from the University of Tokyo and is now research uh, professor at the Advanced Science and Technology at the University of Tokyo. He's also the director of the Nano Electronics Research Center Institute and of Industrial Science at the University of Tokyo and a professor at NTT. His current research is on growth and physics of semiconductors and nanotechnologies for optical devices, including quantum dot lasers and nanostructured devices. Oh, okay. <laughs> Still, this is not 24. <laughs> uh, 25. 25. <laughs> Okay. Uh, I have <laughs> okay. Yeah. It is a little bit early. <laughs> I'll go okay. So uh, my name is Yasuki Arakawa from the University of Tokyo. So I'd like to thank Professor Kimaring for inviting me to this uh, uh, wonderful workshop, and uh, I'm honored to uh, give up my presentations and on the advances in PIC with the quantum of laser for short-reach interconnect. Okay, so as uh, Professor Kimari mentioned in this morning, uh, we, uh, there are two national projects which uh, were performed or which has been uh, running for silicon photonics in Japan. The first one is the first program that PEX project which started in 2010 for almost five years and uh, the total budget is 40 million US dollars or something like that. And then uh, we started making NATO project uh, in 2012 as a 10-year project. Uh, this was supported by the, uh, also the NATO uh, Future Innovation Program. The total budget uh, will be 250 million US dollars. Uh, which is expected valid. And the PEX is the uh, photonics and electronics component system technologies. So now uh, in the United States, AI project, photonics project is running, and also in Europe, several projects are running for silicon photonics. So this is uh, uh, the, uh, the overview of the, our NATO project, which is now running. So, one part is the device technology, uh, the device technology for integration and uh, packaging, and also you know, we investigate innovative device technologies. Also, uh, as a second item, so we investigate e e system integration technologies. Uh, we are uh, aiming at uh, optical IO cores and the multiple optical IO uh, cores for uh, connecting the LSI and also optical silicon interpolar. The future uh, dream is uh, to realize onboard high performance, co performance computers. So the, uh, we started, as I said, at 2012. And so now we are at the, end, at the end of the second term of the, this project. And from the next April, we start uh, the third term uh, the project for four years. In, in, uh, we are aiming at realize to, uh, realizing optical silicon interpolars. So these uh, targets are, are going to the outcome of the AOC or LSI package with optical interface and or server on package. And also we investigated the, uh, the uh, integrated optical communication systems, including uh, digital coherent technology and also ONU for uh, WDB and PON and so on. One of the key devices, the optical IO core, which is uh, uh, now uh, uh, de de going to be uh, delivered to be a commercial market. Before mentioning the IO cores, uh, optical IO cores, I briefly uh, described 
petrol organization. So NEDO is the, uh, the uh, funding organization, and petrol is the, uh, the pro uh, project performing organization in which uh, ICE, Fujitsu, Furukawa Electric, NEC, NEL, NTT, OITDA, OK, and Toshiba are joining. This Petra uh, uh, is working on the for, for device technology and the system integration techno technology, which I mentioned in the previous slide. For the system integration, uh, system technology and the standardization are important issues. And also, device technology is investigated inside the Petra's. And also, then Petra is all, uh, collaborating with the universities. The, uh, so therefore, NEDO grant is flowing to the, also the universities through the Petra. Uh, University of Tokyo, Yokama National University, uh, Kyoto University, uh, Tokyo Institute of Technology, and the Western University. So one of the outcome of the, uh, the NEDO project, one venture company was started. The, the company, name, company name is IO Core Corporation, Co Corporation LTD, and the location is uh, uh, Tokyo, and the design center and the assembly centers are uh, located in Tsukuba and Otsuki in Yamanashi prefectures. And the capital stock is five million US dollars in the current trade, and the asset is the succession of the inter intellectual property from the Petras as the uh, other part. And the description of the business is the mass production, the optical IO cores and sales. And CEO is that, uh, Mr. Fujita, and who was the previous executive director of Petras. And uh, this was company was started April 17, 2017. So this is the production schedule. Engineering sample will be uh, delivered to a commercial market uh, in the next April, very soon. And the commercial sample will, is scheduled to be delivered in August 2018, or a little bit later. So uh, the optical IO core uh, converts the uh, electric signals into optical signals and vice versa. Low power consumption and high speed optical uh, transceiver, <coughs> speed of transceivers. The performance is five milliwatt per gigabps, 20 gigabps per channel, 20 channels. The size of the IO coil, five millimeters uh, squared. And, uh, uh, this is the general concept of the uh, optical IO cores. So this can be applied to, uh, to the first stage, the rack to rack communication. Also, this will be uh, extended to board to board, or LSI to edge, or between LSI uh, interconnect. This is the, uh, uh, the photos of the optical IO cores. This uh, uh, optical IO core compo is composed of the two parts uh, the receivers and the transmitters. Uh, uh, the uh, multi-mode fiber is connected to uh, uh, this optical waveguide through the optical pin. And uh, this is the uh, receiver and also detected by the photo detectors. And electrical signal is going to the uh, uh, electrical output top, uh, part. And this is transmitters and uh, <coughs> laser diode uh, and is uh, modulated uh, by the uh, silicon uh, uh, modulators. And also the, this is connected to the uh, multimodal fibers through the waveguide and the gradient couplers and also optical pins. Of course, uh, the, for commercialization, the uh, requirement and approach it for high cost performance. Well, uh, cost is the devices and the packaging. For the devices, uh, uh, mainly this is decided by the size and the yield, and the small size, integration, the robust design, and so on. 
And silicon photonics is a, a key approach. And uh, also, uh, multiple channel radar diode is important. For packaging, uh, the cost is very important. Low cost part and also simplified structures and procedures, and easy test pro pro procedures. And for this, uh, we have the uh, eliminate accuracy part and the 3D stack structures, but assembly process and uh, assembly aut automation and also <coughs> easy testing. Of course, actual price depends on the uh, production volume and also each manufacturing conditions. This is uh, uh, one of the batch match, uh, batch match assembly uh, flow examples. Automatic uh, uh, batch assembling system for LED mounting and optical pins are described. The first uh, silicon photonic chip is uh, uh, integrated laser diode by flip uh, chip bonding and also IC is integrated and TGV and the optical pins formed uh, by uh, UV test uh, uh, lithography techniques. So this is uh, uh, the equipment for the passive alignment, alignment by uh, uh, the systems and also optical pins is uh, uh, formed by UV photolithography. And this is a photo for the optical pins. Concerning the uh, flip bonding for laser mounting, and, uh, we used uh, passive alignment, uh, we realized the passive alignment through the, uh, uh, the, uh, the Using, uh, using the bump and also the uh, alignment marker on the LED, LED laser diode and so on. <coughs> so this is the uh, coupling loss uh, uh, with, uh, with respect to the deviations. And uh, it should be smaller than the one micron or something like that for keeping high uh, or reducing the coupling losses. Indeed. <laughs> This is uh, uh, the distribution of the horizontal misalignment. Uh, the alignment is, is uh, the, this uh, distribution is in the range of the plus minus 0 0.4 uh, or 4 micron or something like that. And so therefore we can realize high uh, coupling uh, if, uh, efficiency. In or we can reduce uh, the optical coupling losses. So, so laser array is, uh, now the, uh, the quantum dot lasers. So now I'd like to explain the uh, quantum dot lasers uh, for silicon photonics application. So in 1982, I proposed the concept of the three-dimensional confinement structure for application to the active layer in semiconductor lasers uh, in applied physics letters. I published this paper in applied physics letters and we predicted uh, temperature insensitivity of the threshold current. And this, show, uh, this uh, uh, calculated result shows that uh, we don't see any change in the threshold current near the uh, room temperature range if we use this three-dimensional uh, uh, nanostructure. Of course, at that time, it was impossible to fabricate uh, the quantum dot lasers. And however, in, 90, in the beginning of the 1990s, already many groups started to work on the uh, fabrication of the quantum dot lasers using self-assembling growth technique. Today, I don't really have no time to discuss uh, the fabrication technologies for the quantum dot structure, but by using epitaxial layer technologies for uh, Growth tech, epitaxial layer growth technology, we can realize three-dimensional small structures by utilizing the strain effect. The main reason why we can get a very uh, stable operation of the threshold current with respect to uh, con temperatures changing, uh, the three-dimensional confinement uh, realizes uh, completely uh, discrete uh, 
energy level, which result in the density of state of the delta function like state uh, function, delta function like. And as a result, always electrons are confined in the ground state, and this is not the electrons are not disturbed by the increase of the temperature. This is the main reason for the uh, temperature stability of the threshold current. And also, small volume effect is very important. Indeed, this is the uh, evolution of the semiconductor laser with respect to the threshold current densities. So this is bulk lasers and the quantum wave lasers and the quantum wave lasers. So nowadays, the lowest threshold current density is achieved by the quantum dot laser. And so uh, the evolution is uh, coming from the bulk laser to quantum wave laser. And quantum wire laser is skipped, and finally, we are coming uh, the stage of the use of the quantum dot lasers for practical applications. Indeed, in 90, uh, sorry, 2014, I evidenced uh, the temperature stability of the threshold current uh, by using uh, quantum dot structures in reactive layers in collaboration with Fujitsu laboratories. Uh, this is uh, uh, the threshold current for the quantum lasers and that of the quantum dot lasers. You can see the change of the threshold current with change of the uh, temperatures uh, for the quantum wave lasers. However, for the quantum dot lasers, there is no change in the threshold current. This will be a, a very useful for a practical application because we don't need any temperature uh, current adjustment or temperature adjustment. So this is 25 gear BPS modulation result uh, with a very, uh, in the temperature, temperature range between 20 degrees Celsius and 70 degrees Celsius without any adjustment. Also, high temperature stability can be led to high temperature operations. Indeed, uh, quantum dot laser was uh, operated at 220 uh, Celsius, the degrees Celsius. And you know, I believe this is the highest operation temperatures for the, any kind of uh, semiconductor lasers. So this is very useful because LSI chips generate heat, and sometimes light source must be uh, placed uh, near the such kind of LSI chips. And uh, if we use normal quantum dot lasers, uh, the, the laser, semiconductor laser cannot be operated uh, above the 120 degrees C Celsius. Uh, however, in this case, for the quantum dot laser, we the light source can be operated even above the uh, 200 degrees Celsius, so on. So well, based on these technical advantages in Japan, one venture company was uh, established uh, in 2006. The so temperature stability, high temperature operation, and also due to the low alpha parameters, high tolerance uh, to optical feedback noise is also uh, demonstrated, uh, is a unique feature for the quantum dot laser. So now, uh, one million chips per year uh, shipped or delivered to commercial market. So this is the illustration of the quantum dot lasers. Here, we have eight, la eight stacked layers or 10 stacked layers for the quantum dot uh, materials and the density the 10 to the uh, 10 or so five times 10 to the 10 or so something like that. So nowadays, quantum dot laser, our oh, sorry, quantum dot, it can be uh, applied to telecoms and the manufacturing sensors. And it's, of course, silicon photonics, which is the main uh, subject today. And, and if we use a single photon, a single quantum structure, we can handle single photon or uh, entangled event photon. So therefore, this can be utilized to quantum computers or quantum cryptographic communications. 
Or if we use this quantum dot st structures in the deal, uh, infrared detectors, uh, this can be uh, useful for realizing uh, remote sensing and so on. And in the future, this quantum dot can be uh, applied to quantum dot solar cells. Five years ago, I predicted the uh, uh, upper limit of the uh, 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 efficiency of the solar cells. Uh, to uh, is uh, was uh, I showed it was uh, eighty percent or something like that. So therefore, the quantum dot solar cell is the ultimate nanostructure which realizes high uh, convergent efficiency. And so quantum dot can be also utilized for the displays and also laser manufacturing uh, uh, light source uh, will be also the uh, promising target for the quantum dot structure. So the, of course today I will discuss uh, the, uh, more, uh, the, more the, on the silicon photonics application. So there are two, three methods, uh, flip G bonding, which I showed uh, in the previous slide, and also wafer bonding technique, and the direct epitaxial growth. So first I come back to the uh, flip G bonding uh, technique. So this is uh, uh, the uh, optical IO cores, and uh, here quantum dot laser arrays are uh, integrated. The size is five millimeter squares and so on. This is uh, uh, the major performance for the optical IO cores. So this is the uh, temperature characteristics of the quantum dot laser arrays. And even if the temperature is uh, over 800, so 80 degrees Celsius, the threshold current is almost the same. And uh, this is a uh, uh, wide uh, the eye, uh, eye, eye opening, uh, eye diagrams of the uh, output of the, uh, the photo detectors and in the temperature range of minus 40 degrees Celsius and 85 deg uh, degrees Celsius. You can find this in a very wide, wide, in a wide temperature range the same I diagram can be realized, even if we don't have any adjustment. That's the point. Also, uh, eye opening can be realized up to 32 gigabps and uh, uh, without any adjustment. So this is uh, uh, the result which shows uh, uh, the future potentiality of the uh, quantum dot lasers for silicon photonics. And also, uh, this is uh, uh, the eye diagram to the uh, with optical feedback noise effect. For the case, if we use quantum wave lasers, sometimes I is disturbed by the optical feedback. However, in the case of uh, quantum dot lasers, I pattern does not change even if optical feedback noise effect is existing. This is, uh, as I said, main, uh, this is mainly due to the suppressed alpha parameters of the semiconductor lasers, uh, which is realized by the three-dimensional confinement of electrons in the system. So therefore, the optical IO core, which is utilizing a flip chip bonding technique, is very promising for various applications. But uh, we are university, we are working at the university, so therefore we are also uh, investigating the next generation method and the wafer bounding and also direct epithelial growth techniques. First, I will describe briefly the wafer bounding techniques for uh, realizing array lasers. And uh, we are utilizing everlasting wave coupling on 3.5 silicon hybrid effect laser structures, and gain the 3-5 materials, and the cavity defined by an coupled 
DFB or DBR structure, the SOI, the web guide. Of course, in this case, not, not mismatching problem between the silica and the three five technologies. And red up to put it directly and efficiently coupled to SOI web guide if we are this kind of structure. The alignment is very easy. Indeed, we worked on the realization of high high hybrid silicon quantum dot lasers and uh, key element of direct wave for burning and the adiabatic mode transformed and the distributed black reflectors. So here, silicon wave guide, the, the sorry, width of the silicon wave guide becomes shrinked uh, when uh, active layer is placed, where uh, active layer is placed. By using these structures, optical wave is evolutionary coupled to the optical wave guide like this. And again, they enhanced at the 3-5 region. And uh, uh, so reflector is composed of the two DBR pillars in these structures shown here. So uh, this is a simulation of the adiotic mode transform from the uh, active layer to, uh, quantum, sorry, quantum dot game regions to the uh, optical waveguide. So at this place, you can see the optical field is concentrated on the three five materials. However, here, due to the adiabatic transfer uh, of the optical waves, optical wave is coupled to automatically or uh, adiabatically to the optical wave guide. Indeed, we have fabricated. Uh, this evanescent uh, uh, type uh, DB, uh, DBR structure lasers with the quantum dot gains. We have achieved uh, high temperature operations up to uh, 150, 15 uh, degrees Celsius and so on. TO dot is uh, uh, three Kelvin, 300 Kelvin near the room temperatures. And this is a near field observed up to the the current of 300 milliamp and so on, you can see the emission from the optical wave guide edges. We, since we are using <laughs> DBR structures, still we cannot define a single mode operation. So therefore, finally, we instead of using DBR, two DBR mirrors, we used, we fabricated uh, or we processed the formation of the DAV structures in the silicon wave guide. And in this case, single mode operation can be guaranteed if uh, enough coupling is realized. Indeed, we achieved our first hybrid quantum of the DAV laser and uh, so single mode uh, suppression ratio ratio is over the 40, oh sorry, side mode suppression ratio is over 40, and so single mode operation is realized. This, and also wavelengths is one point, nearly one point, <laughs> exactly one point, sorry, uh, 1.267 uh, micrometers. Then we can, realize, we can apply this technology to multi wavelengths. Uh, Light sources. Indeed, recently we succeeded in evaluating the silicon hybrid quantum dot DFB laser arrays of the five channels with different wavelengths. So this can be applied to many kind of uh, silicon photonics uh, integrated circuit technologies. Okay, finally, I uh, briefly mentioned the direct epitaxial growth. So the, so far, I have been discussing uh, uh, flipped bonding and uh, also wafer bonding technique. Our dream is to realize direct temperature growth of the, uh, quantum dot structures on silicon or SOI. But uh, direct growth of quantum dot laser on silicon has various problems. Of course, today I don't, dis like, I don't discuss the details of but I just mentioned mismatch the polarity, mismatch the lattice constant, mismatch thermal expansion coefficient, 
between the gallium arsenide and silicon. Indeed, even 30 years ago, several uh, groups tried to realize uh, quantum wave lasers on silicon, but they failed it. But now we succeed, we could succeed in, in realizing 3-5 lasers on silicon by utilizing a quantum dot structure. Because in the case of quantum wells, uh, carriers are uh, flowing, uh, moved along the quantum well. So therefore, at, uh, sometimes uh, electrons are trapped by the electron, uh, so threatening dislocation. However, in the case of the quantum dot, once electron hole pair is captured inside the quantum dot, this is a free flow of the, uh, trapping effect of the, uh, due to the threading dislocation. So this is the, the advantage of the use of the quantum dot structures for uh, three, five lasers on silicon. However, still we need to uh, real, uh, solve many kind of problem, antiphase domain effect or threading dislocation. So for Overcoming these two issues, we have the very uh, high quality buffer layers and also super lattice, uh, stra strained super uh, layer super lattice uh, uh, filters uh, for the threading dislocation. Indeed, by increasing uh, strained uh, layer structures, uh, Threatening dislocation is dramatically decreased. Particularly, it is not easy to realize uh, silicon, on axis silicon ones. However, recently we realized to uh, raising, uh, realize uh, the raising operations at room temperatures uh, of uh, quantum dot lasers on. Uh, Silicon, uh, one zero zero just substrate. When we pro uh, reported this result, this is the lowest threshold current density among any quantum dot lasers directly grown on silicon by using all MB. But recently, other groups are also trying to do uh, the similar technique. Okay, uh, in summary, uh, in the first part, I emphasize that Petra is developing the silicon photonic technology, aiming at the future optical interpolators through as a, a NEDO project. And optical IO core technology is an outcome from the Petra. And now, uh, IO core corporation uh, is trying to, or <laughs> is making effort to uh, deliver uh, the optical IO core to the commercial market for various short-lit interconnect application. Finally, I emphasize, or I would like to emphasize that the quantum dot laser is a key device uh, component for uh, future silicon photonics. So thank you very much for your attention. I think we might have time just for one question. Thanks. Uh, uh, congratulations on the fantastic results with the quantum dot lasers. I have two questions. One is, uh, is there a limit to the long wavelength side of quantum dot lasers? And then secondly, uh, what would be the integration scheme for uh, the epitaxial approach? Because you need to isolate the waveguide in plane, right? Yes. Uh, these two questions are very good questions. and. Uh, Currently, we are developing one or other. Okay, first, so currently, uh, the wavelength of the quantum dot laser is usually 1.3 micro. And uh, we believe this can be applied to many kinds of silicon photonics and also telecom. But in the future, we should also aim at realizing 1.55 micro uh, wavelengths for quantum dot lasers. And uh, if we, we, we use indium phosphide substrate, 
we can we may realize 1.55 micron quantum dot lasers. However, the quantum dot itself is not perfect at the present stage. So therefore, we are now working on to extend the wavelengths of the quantum dot laser based on the Gallimard and substrate, keeping the high quality quantum dot structures. Currently, uh, we can get the photoluminescence from the quantum dot structures up to 1.5 microns and so on. However, still, uh, density, quantum dot density is not so high, and also, uh, there, there are also the uh, intensity, uh, yeah, so maybe the quality of the quantum, dot, I mean the quantum efficiency is not so excellent compared to the uh, 1.3 micron quantum dot laser. So therefore, we are now making effort to do that. The concerning second question, I, I'm also doubting, <laughs> I'm not so optimistic for the application of the direct epitaxial growth of the quantum dot laser, quantum dot on silicon to uh, silicon photonics. As you mentioned, uh, we have to define, uh, keep the uh, optical waveguide, and also, we have to grow the uh, quantum 3-5 material on CMOS processed circuit. And the gross temperature, usually gross temperature of MBE, uh, molecular beam epitaxy is over the 500 degrees Celsius, so on, or even 600 degrees Celsius. I think this temperature is not compatible with the CMOS circuit. So therefore, I'm not, even myself, <laughs> I'm not so optimistic for the technologies. But we are making effort. Thank you very much. We'll give a hand to our speaker.